here with Tony Brettrigger, Central Laboratory Manager, Roads, Pavement and Geotechnical Engineering with the Roads and Maritime Services, and we're talking stockpiles. Tony, this is where it all begins in terms of our common earthworks testing. What are the critical things we have to remember in terms of sampling stockpiles? The core concern really is that your samples are absolutely representative of the stockpile and that the samples represent a homogeneous lot that you haven't picked up a packet of soil that in truth bears no resemblance to the overall. Yes. Uh, sampling is perhaps the most important step in assuring good and reliable test results. OK, Tony, sounds fair, but how do you go about doing that? Through a process called sampling and sample division. Each type of stockpile has a specific sampling protocol in accordance with the relevant inspection test plan. Mm. And that spells out sample sizes for various material types. Yes. Yeah. Now what we're seeing here is how the appropriate and specified sample is selected from a predetermined section of the stockpile. And first thing to notice is that it's a large sample. I was just thinking exactly that. And surely you don't test all that. So this is where the process of sample division comes in. And the key focus is ensuring that as the sample is reduced down to a testing size, that it remains representative of the material in the stockpile. It's called sample division because? It's called sample division because, in essence, that's what we do. We either use mechanical or manual techniques to divide the original sample into smaller and smaller parcels until the required test size is achieved. And that test size is determined again according to the type of aggregate or soil. Now, dumb question here, Tone, but do you keep or discard the excess from the sample? Because of the way sample division is done, the last split means you have two highly representative samples. The second of these you store until all testing has been satisfactorily completed. So Tony, what is the key message here? It's that if the sample is not representative of the stockpile, then it can render all subsequent testing irrelevant or worthless. I can remember a contractor submitting a sample from only the size of the stockpile. The sample was coarser than the specification and failed. If the sample had been taken from the sides and top of the stockpile, then it may have passed. 